Welcome to day 21. We are in John chapter 21. If you want to go ahead and open up the word, I'll pray for us and we will dive in. God, thank you for this opportunity that we've had these past 20 days to walk through this gospel that is so important to our faith, so important uh, to understanding who you are and your purpose uh, that you had on earth and also the purpose you have for us uh, as your sons and daughters. And we ask now that he would help us see what you want us to see here in chapter 21 as we uh, come to a close. We love you and we pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. All right. Uh, a little bit sad that this is our last day. Um, uh, we hope to do another study like this at some point in the future, but I just really am amazed at the amount of you that have gone through this entire study. And uh, it's okay if, if you only went through part of it, um, but. Hopefully at some point, whether you went through all of it or part of it, that it, it helped you in some way understand who Jesus is. And at the end of the day, uh, our mission is uh, to help you find and follow Christ. That, that's it. Helping people find and follow Christ. And, and we know that the Word of God is uh, one of the keys to helping us find and follow Christ. We're never done. Uh, some of you uh, potentially came to faith through this series. Some of you, maybe you've been reading the Word for a long time. Uh, regardless of where you're at, um, my prayer is that you have taken a step um, and grown in your obedience of what it looks like to find and follow Christ. Well, we're going to start in verse 1, and again, chapter 21, finishing this up. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And we've said this before, but only, only the Gospel of John uh, talks about the Sea of Galilee in this way, but um, Sea of Tiberias, for whatever reason, this is the way that John described uh, the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way, Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, and uh, from, from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two other disciples were there. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning Jesus stood on the shore, but, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, uh, when they, did they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they had landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with the fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Now, 153, there's speculations from different commentators on, you know, what does this mean? Is there something within the, the number there? And uh, through the different uh, guys that I've looked through, the, really I think the emphasis is, is there's a lot of fish. There's a lot of fish. And John wanted uh, uh, us to know and the audience to know that there was a ridiculous amount of fish that was caught. That's really the emphasis. Verse 12, Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. It was the third time. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of, uh, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Now this obviously, uh, if you remember, uh, a few chapters ago, Peter denied Jesus three different times. And the repetition here is uh, helping draw our attention to, uh, to that, where Jesus in many ways uh, is reinstating Peter. Uh, as you can imagine, Peter is carrying this with him. Uh, it, I mean, if we've betrayed someone, which most of us have, it's hard to get over that. You're beating yourself up constantly. Uh, and without question, uh, Peter was, was still doing this. And Jesus, in a way that only he could, 
restores and at the same time challenges, same time challenges Peter. He he's reinstating him here. Feed my sheep. Verse 18, I tell you the truth, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted, but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Now it's believed in uh, church history that under Nero, uh, that Peter was crucified. And it got to the point where it was clear that they were going to crucify Peter. And Peter said, you know what, I, um, I'm not worthy to be crucified in the same way that, that my Lord Jesus was crucified. And so they, they crucified him upside down. Uh, so this is a prophetic word from Jesus. Uh, Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter uh, would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was uh, the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that will betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Uh, Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is it that what is it to you? You must follow me. And this is just so I love how human Peter is. I mean, this is something I definitely would have done. You know, if you imagine Jesus telling you, hey, this is how you're going to die. Uh, but then you're like, wait a second, but what about, what about this guy? <laughs> and um, Jesus, uh, you know, helps him understand that don't worry about him. Uh, you need to follow me. I have a vision for your life. Uh, you have been called Simon, which means, uh, um, you know, a pebble. I'm about to change your name to uh, what means to be the rock. And it's on you, Peter, that I'm going to build my church. Verse 23, because of this, the rumor spread among the brothers that this disciple would not die. Speaking of John, he was the only apostle not to die a martyr's death. Uh, but Jesus did not say that he would not die, that he only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is it to you? Verse 24, last two verses. Here we go. This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that this, that his testimony is true. Speaking of John, Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would have uh, would not have room for the books that would be written. This is certainly hyperbole. Uh, John ending this gospel, making this uh, outlandish statement. Uh, for the point of people to understand that, man, I've recorded a lot here. This is an eyewitness account. Um, but there's so much more to Jesus. I, I've, I've done my best here, but there's so much more. If I would have recorded everything that he had done, uh, there wouldn't be enough you know, pages in the world to hold uh, the words of his acts and deeds. And I saw one commentator said that if you were to read aloud all the deeds and miracles recorded in the Gospels, it would be like a three and a half hour out loud reading uh, yet we know his ministry was three and a half years, and just using that as a as a kind of quick example of there's so much more that Jesus did. Now the part that uh, stands out to me, I want to finish with how we've been doing most of these days, just me kind of sharing the verse that jumped off the page. Uh, for me, it's verse 15. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Now there's some debate of what uh, these is referring to from Jesus. Um, some think that maybe he's referring to the disciples. Um, some think that he's re uh, referring to the fish. Uh, I'm actually believing that he's referring to the fish, given the context in which this is given. Uh, they have 153 fish. Um, the chapter before, Jesus breathes on them, right? And he sends them. Yet, all of a sudden now, Peter's back doing what he used to do. He's fishing. And the reason that this stands out to me is I believe this uh, connects with every single one of us today, and it's this, that we have the propensity to reach out and cling to things that maybe we've been successful at in the past, maybe successful at in the present. Uh, and we cling to these things in such a way that we begin uh, to let these things define us. You know, for probably all of us, it's not fishing. Uh, but for some of you, it's banking. For some of you, it's sales. For some of you, it's in uh, the kind of parent that you are. Uh, for some of you, it's the grades that you're getting in junior high or it's the, the grades that you're getting in high school so that you can get into the, the college that you have dreamed of. For some of you college students, it's popularity. Uh, it's dating the right person. Uh, it's getting the right internship. Um, for pastors like myself, it's having a really big church. 
It's preaching a really good sermon. It's getting amazing feedback from people. Um, Jesus is, is, I believe, in this moment saying to Peter, listen, um, these fish, the things that you're actually good at, you fished your whole life, you're professional fishermen. I'm, I'm calling you and I'm commanding you for you to not let these things define you. I think at the end of this gospel, Jesus again is saying, listen, I am the only king and I demand lordship where nothing else is put above me. And I've heard from a number of you guys that uh, what this devotional has done is it's brought the priority of your relationship with Jesus back up to the very top. And, and I believe that that's what God wants for us. Uh, I believe that Jesus is asking us that question today. Uh, he's, he's looking at the, um, the paycheck or the diplomas on the wall or the accomplishments. Uh, he's looking at the different things that we easily let define us. And he's saying, do you love these things more than me? And I believe that Jesus is saying, listen, these things aren't bad things, all right? But if you're not careful, you can make those good things ultimate things. And that's what idolatry is. It's taking good things and making them ultimate things. And I believe Jesus is saying to us again today through his word, I am the ultimate thing. I am the son of God. I am the risen Christ. I have defeated death. I am your king. And I am ultimate. Place your lordship in me. Make me number one. And my prayer is that this, this uh, devotional has helped do that. And my prayer is that uh, this will continue to be the case for you and for me. May we place Jesus as the number one priority in our life. May we place him supreme in our life. Uh, may we place him as king. My prayer is that our heart and our actions will show that he is, in fact, king and Lord and Savior of our life been awesome walking through this gospel with you. I love you guys deeply. I pray that you'll continue to grow in your affection and heart for Jesus Christ and all of us together combined as a community will continue to find and follow Christ. Have a great rest of the day. We'll see you guys soon. God bless.